Bhagavad Gita which is the Bible and God is Son. Because without God, it is impossible to readily govern the world. Without God, it will be impossible to do your best to move our country forward as you will take that moment. Let's pray. And so Father, help us this day and bless the honorable men and women, Lord, that have come, Lord, to be able, Lord, to ask questions, give them the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that God will interview the minister's destiny for finance. We pray that your grace will sustain this time in this occasion. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. Police, uh, I think we all have agreed to have the hearing jointly for the Minister of Commerce and Development and the and the Commissioner General of the Nigeria Revenue Authority. That said, we will ask the nominee to introduce themselves, and then after which we will come to the senators that are here for self introduction. After that, we have asked one of our colleagues who is to do the reading of the rules that will govern this hearing. And then from there, the co-chair of the committee, Senator Creighton Duncan, will make an opening statement on behalf of the committee. So we'll move to the nominees, beginning with the minister, designate for self-introduction. If just introduction, you have your time to do a presentation. I am Bolima S. Kamar, Minister of Finance, Development Planning, My name is James Dabot Chala. I'm the Commissioner General Designate for the Library of New York Party. Beginning with the Senator's introduction, I'm Senator Prince Kemumboy of Bone County, the Chairman of the Committee on Ways, Mays, Farmers, Development Planning. I'm a great town co-chair, okay? Senator of Sino County, co-chairman on the Committee of Ways, Mays, Farmers, and Project. Thank you, thank you, colleagues. Uh, so we we'll ask our colleagues, uh, Senator Dobo, to read what we have agreed on as our working tools to guide this uh, here, Senator Dobo. Thank you, our uh, chair.
And um, and then uh, we will take uh, five questions each of concern for the public for each of the committee, and that those concerns will be written and given to the such and um, and we send to the chairman thanks. Uh, to have the public interaction in the process. Thank you. Thank you. Our goal for that um, piece of work is done. <coughs> so with that said, we will now take uh, the Minister of Destiny, the Minister of Finance and Development Plan. Oh, sorry, sorry, thank you. That's why you will have four heads in the room. No, yeah, you should do your opening statement and then we'll have to Well, thank you, uh, colleagues, for being present. This <clears throat> uh, is the <clears throat> nominee of the uh, the Minister of Finance and also Honorable uh, Jana, the nominees for the LRA. We would like to welcome you to this chamber of the Senate and to this committee. Uh, all eyes are on you because the position that you are very nominated for is very key.
the foreign foreign citizen of the Republic of Nigeria. The foreign foreign citizen of the Republic of Nigeria. Do we have a swear? Do we have a swear? That the testimony I'm about to give. That the testimony I'm about to give. To my recollection. To my recollection. This is true. This is true. This is nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So we go. So we go. Thank you. Well, the old thing, a minister will now take the um, 15 minutes presentation on the minister blessing the Ministry of Finance and Development Plan. <laughs> Distinguished Chair and Honorable Members of the Senate Ways, Names, Finance, and Budget Committee, all the distinguished Senators and Members of the Legislature, mind family, friends, and well reachers, Members of the Press, the people of Liberia, ladies and gentlemen. We are grateful to our Lord, Yeshua Hamashia, for the gift of life. Let me first extend sincere thanks and appreciation to this excellency, President Joseph Newman Boyka, for the trust and confidence reposed in us to manage our nation's finances. We would like to assure the President that upon confirmation, we will serve our country as servant enablers of prudent fiscal management underpaid by the spirit of teamwork. We also extend profound thanks to this honorable committee and the entire Senate for the opportunity to appear before this august body for confirmation here. Distinguished Senators, our years of service to our nation has been and will always continue to be characterized by the fear of God, unfettered law for the motherland, and respect for all people marked by tolerance and humility. Honorable Senators, special recognition goes to my wife, Antony Nadia Santos, sitting on my far left, Kamara and children who have been the pillar and source of strength in everything I do. Indeed, a blessing and a rare find. The Lord has gifted us with five beautiful children. We come to this call with over 22 years of work experience both at home and abroad dealing with monetary, fiscal, development planning, and innovative financing for health issues at regional and continental levels. At the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNESCO, West Africa Regional Office, we help to implement, monitor, and evaluate the report on the Agenda 2030 and the African Union 2063 in West Africa assisted with the formulation of ECOWAS Vision 2050 Framework document, supported the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area, CFTA, in the West Africa region, and also coordinated impact assessment of COVID-19 and recovery response, among others. Our task at the African Union Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Africa CDC, included focusing on the facilitation of partnerships between the Africa CDC and finance and economic planning communities, developing strategy and identifying the best practices to engage relevant stakeholders, to leverage financing for health, supporting the health economics and financing program of the Africa CDC, to develop context relevant to help financing <coughs> mechanism to boost investment in public health. As we seek to build a vibrant economy that is inclusive 
and what jobs are sustainable. The time for all Liberians to put our nation first is now. We must confront and meet the fool with violent unpretending. The main reason why our economic backwardness is the old economic model, which relies mainly on exploitation of raw materials, especially iron ore, rubber, and other minerals, with limited emphasis on economic diversification, which usually paves the way for industrialization of an economy. We must be intentional about innovation and thinking outside the box. And outside the box thinking, for example, should consider the Liberos program with the IMF should be one that should go side by side with a robust coordinated and integrated framework that match up where resources are to be spent for optimal results. The new economic model that should resonate with all Liberians, especially the policymakers, can be formed in the slogan made in Liberia, a commitment. By giving the private sector center stage in policy decision making as the engine for growth and development. The time has come to move away from government being the largest employer to the private sector as the anchor for sustainable job creation. Government's policy should intentionally support domestic public addition with Liberian entrepreneurs leading the charge. In this regard, the government should work with our development partners to ensure that development systems be aligned with our national government plan. A big thank you to our development partners for continuous support to the government and our people. Tangible investment largely in agricultural value chain, where smallholders are supported smartly, will be a good start. This is the soft side from my perspective. The heavy lifting of Liberia's structural transformation can only be guaranteed when most of the borrowing go towards addressing the binding constraints, which includes high cost of electricity and limited paved roads especially along the growth current and strengthening the financial system for more support to development projects. The absence of a capital market in Liberia is another problem raising needed capital for development, something which requires more attention by the government. We must know what we want, agree on what we want, and just do it. Distinguished Senators, the over 16 years of distinguished public sector experience dealing with monetary and fiscal markets and of Liberia as Deputy Governor for Economic Policy and Minister of Finance and Development Planning, among others, coupled with my recent experience in outside Liberia as a consultant with the UAECA and the African Union dealing with macroeconomic and public health financing issues, clearly made me in best faith to serve again as Minister of Finance to steal our nation's finances. When confirmed as Minister, we will work hard with your collaboration and support to reposition our economy on a sustainable path of growth and form by the pending new National Development Plan that places more emphasis on agriculture, roads, and education. This will mean working to secure and sustain financing for critical investments and assuring the optimization of public resources where efficiency gains are clearly in the interest of all our people. Distinguished Senators, it is important to note that we will be taking over the nation's finances at an extraordinarily challenging time. The effects of COVID-19 and the ukraine russia war on the global economy still linger with implications for global growth and demand for commodity exports from Liberia. There have been issues of low economic growth in the last six years with an average of 1.3 percent, double-digit inflationary pressure on the back of exchange rate depreciation, 
and frequent recast of the national budget on account of underperforming revenue. The fiscal balance of the government that we are inheriting is, a, is in a very bad state. The report of 40 million as the GOL's consolidated account balance as of January 19, 2024. It's not supported by the balance. The balance is reported by the CBL as of the same date was 20.5 million. Liberian dollars balance is converted and added to the US dollar balance. Highly encumbered, not 40 million. When it comes to the dual consolidated account balances, there can be no commingling of balances of the old fiscal year i.e. FY 2023 and the new fiscal year 2024. Consistent with section 34 of the amended PFM Act of 2009. This means all encumbrances and commitment on claims on the existing board account, which in this case is the FY 2023 consolidated account balance. Records show that the NFDP borrowed 18 million from the CBL to fund payroll for November and December of 2023. We will give greater clarity on this matter as we proceed. New borrowings that further widen the budget deficit, Section 16 of the amended restatement of the PMF out of 2009 on computation of budget surplus or debt. As we have been made aware that Liberia has been sanctioned due to lack of payment of dues to the African Union and the African Development Bank, in addition a default in payment of about 650000 to the European Investment Bank is preventing a disbursement of over $13 million for the San Luka Fuero. Now, other institutions have reached out to us because of government non-payment of interest principal permission to several international organizations, including Export Import Bank of China, OPEC Fund for International Development, and the International Fund for Agriculture. These are just a few examples of the issues we are inheriting. A full fiscal review to determine the 2023 fiscal outturn will be done swiftly and outcomes be made known to this honorable body and the public when conference. Nonetheless, amidst these challenges, we will work with the Liberian Revenue Authority to strengthen revenue collection and help improve tax administration. Domestic resource mobilization must take center stage through innovation and at the same time closing loopholes and minimizing other influences affecting revenue collection. Key emphasis must be on digital technology in revenue collection. On the expenditure front, in these challenging economic times, the government will have to take appropriate austerity measures by shifting resources toward priority sectors such as roads, agriculture, health, education, and security. Distinguished Senators, public sector investment projects, i.e. capital expenditure, should increase to at least 15% as a share of the 2024 national budget. In year one, under which the Biden administration has come. This is one of the areas we can work together to improve the well-being of the Liberian people. In conclusion, we once again thank His Excellency President Joseph Newman Boyka for our preferment and assure the Honorable Senate Ways, Mains, Finance and Budget Committee that we will work with the national legislature and our development partners in strengthening our public financial management system creating an enabling environment to do business in Liberia and placing the nation's finances on a sustainable path to deliver the investment needed for economic growth and job creation. We now submit our presentation for your record.
Essentially, is going to focus on three major prompts. Institutional strengthening, revenue expansion, and governance improvement. On the institutional strengthening piece, you agree with me that the foundation of an effective revenue authority lies in robust institutional structure. I will be proposing a revision to the framework that we currently have so that we can have transformation in elevating the authority to grant it a full autonomy status. This, in my belief, will be able to solve a lot of the operational and antecedent problems that exist with the current SEMA autonomous structure that the authority currently has. You will also all recall that when a decision was made a couple of years ago to detach the Department of Budget from the Ministry of Finance, I'm sorry, the Department of Revenue from the Ministry of Finance and create the Library of Revenue Authority, the thinking at the time was that this will be a five-year experiment. And the hope was that once we got it right, to eventually graduate the authority to a full autonomy status. Even though there has been marked improvement, and this is not to say there have not been challenges, but the uh, granting the authority, the full autonomy, is still an action that is overdue and outstanding. This full autonomy will empower the authority to make strategic decisions swiftly, allocate resources more effectively, and be accountable for delivering results. We will also work at building, restoring a merit-based system, which is paramount to ensure that promotions, appointments, etc., are based on competence and performance, thereby fostering a culture of excellence and integrity. On the revenue expansion prong, we know that revenue generation is the basis for our nation's fiscal health. And as you heard the president in his annual message to the nation, and also as you just heard from the finance minister, most of these services that each of them have committed to supporting for our people rely heavily, if not entirely, on our revenue generating capacity. In so doing, there are certain key aspects that we want to focus on in our revenue generation framework. The first one is we need to look at our exemption regime you know, and see whether there are efficiencies that we could deploy 
And for that, we will work with the Ministry of Finance, yourselves and the uh, presidency, as well as the National Investment Commission, the Ministry of Commerce, and other actors to ensure that we can be able to optimize you know, and see the relevance of some of those incentives and how we could be able to rationalize them so that we can be able to increase revenue inputs, I mean revenue intake. We also will work with you as well as with other stakeholders in helping decentralizing revenue collection. We know that the last legislature passed the Local Government Act, and as a part of that act, you know, we need to decentralize some of these revenue functions. Such things as real estate property tax collection, as well as other tax and service and, and fees will need to be devolved to the municipalities for greater efficiency as well as for revenue sharing. Another area that we intend to focus on is revising our consumer tax system. Currently, as you all know, the current legislature, there's a bill before the legislature for the value added tax law. The pilot that LRA has conducted with that shows that there's multiple increased potential in domestic revenue mobilization. You know, if we were able to get this one piece and get the full cooperation of all stakeholders in the process. So we'll be working with you in the Ministry of Finance as well as through the President's office to make sure that this bill can be passed into law. You know, then it will give us the empowerment to be able to generate more revenue. And I agree with the Minister that we need to deploy innovative solutions and we need to implement technologies to enhance efficiency and effectiveness of our operation. Now I'd like to lay more emphasis on the efficiency and effectiveness part because there are you know, uh, reports that in our revenue generation mechanisms there may be some need for improvement. There may be revenue losses, waste and abuse that we think that by in deploying technology we can help to minimize some of those you know, uh, uh, waste and abuse. In terms of governance, for a revenue authority to succeed, they must operate within a transparent and accountable governance system. My commitment is to foster strong relationships with various stakeholders, including the Ministry of Finance, the legislature, the judiciary, the business com community, civil society, and other actors, through an open dialogue and collaboration. I believe we can ensure that our policies and practices are not only effective, but also fair and transparent for the benefit of all of our systems. I come to you with nearly three decades of senior managerial experience in both the public and private sector. My records are very clear. Um, it includes work in the private sector, we oversaw the governance of Ecobank Liberia at the time when it was at a stage of almost collapsing. We managed to turn it around. And for the many decades that Ecobank has been in Liberia, it had never generated any return for its shareholders. But under our leadership, we were able to turn Ecobank around from loss making to profit trading. We also spent four years at the Public Procurement and Concessions Commission. And in that role, I had the privilege of working with many of you who are still in this legislature, because many of you were in this legislature at the time. And we all worked to strengthen public procurement. We developed systems, deployed technologies that give greater transparency and accountability you know, we also have worked in other areas, in academia. Currently, we head the Carter Center, where we're implementing, you know, development-related projects related to peace and security, as well as enhancing our democracy. In conclusion, my vision for the Revenue Authority is one where institutional strength, revenue expansion, 
and robust governance come together to create an organization that is not only efficient and effective, but also trusted and respected by the people it serves. With your support, I am confident that we can achieve these goals and contribute significantly to our nation's prosperity. Before I end, I would like to uh, make special recognition of my wife, Sada. Sada, raise her hand. Yeah, I want to um, extend my special gratitude to her because she has been my partner from junior high school. Wow. Yes, we were in junior high together and we used to be sneaking from our parents. What age? What age? What age? We were the same age. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So she has been my pillar of strength and my support. Right. And she has made a lifetime commitment to me and will continue to be so. I want to thank her. I want to thank our children. Unlike the minister that has only five, is it? Yeah, we have about two dozen. <laughs> <laughs> and we are very thankful. So I'd like to submit, Mr. Chairman and Honorable Senators, I'm sending back for more questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for the two presentations. Like our colleague said, the secretary of this committee will give five minutes each. Two of them, five minutes for interacting. Yeah, five minutes. So it's ten. So it's ten. We agree. Yeah. Can we agree with that? Maxima. Maxima, okay. Maxima, okay. Okay, so we'll take 10 minutes interaction for each senator to the both of Yeah, to the both of you. We are then asked to give the first preference to our protein in Meritus. I think he has some other obligation. So we'll begin with uh, Senator Chi to give his uh, questions and constraints in 10 minutes. Thank you. Let me work on my. My former colleague from the university, Professor Gala, back to the government, and the junior brother. I to go as well. I believe you guys have the requisite experience to bring to, to the table. So the minister was speaking, and as soon as I brought gold diamond iron over to my eyes, I started opening it. But that's my period. So he said that the, the old mother depends on the traditional export of gold, diamonds, iron ore, and rubber. That's the old model. The new model to be diversification. For me, I've heard this over and over and over. When government goes, when government comes, see the economic model. I believe, inside the diversification, what we need to do is to put in money in this sector, the revenue generating sector, and improve on them greatly. Because anytime you read the bulletin from the central bank, when there's a growth, you will read that primarily due to exports of gold, growth in that sector. So there are sectors we need to, to, to spend money on to make them more profitable. Let me go now to my inquiry. Several years back, there are two distinct ministries, Ministry of Planning and Economy Affairs, Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Finance. We merged them. Since we merged them, people from, from the public sector and from the public, general public, have been complaining. Say the Ministry of 
many the activities have all vanished. Do you agree with the minister? Yeah, it's all right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, um, it's good that you brought this up, and we've been in conversation around this issue. Certainly, I, I align myself with that sentiment, that the structure, even the current structure of the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning, and the manner and form in which it positions the development planning section of the ministry, uh, obviously has to change. And, and in conversation with professional colleagues, my professional uh, and personal take on this matter would be to revert. There is a need to give full recognition to the development planning piece of our nation. It cannot be subsumed in the way it is currently. And, and in that regard, I, 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 I certainly believe the, the attempt to move our country in a direction that is solidified, sustained, it must be informed by the planning piece, and that cannot be uh, a place of second guessing. And the relevant training, because everything that has to do with total factor productivity, informing the development planning piece, the extent to which the right labor force contribution, all of those will have to be properly planned, and that means uh, just having a minister, a deputy minister for budget and development planning, uh, that's not the way to proceed. And certainly we say it has to change. Yeah. We will work with you uh, very soon. And by God's grace, one confirm we think those will be one of the areas for legislative reform. Thank you. So my next question goes to all of you. So that at the end of the day, 
This will be part of the area we are talking about minimizing those things that are creating some form of loss in the system. And the group in revenue, if we just do it right, automating, making sure that the middle layer uh, of which these incentives are, are, are awarded. So from both the Ministry of Finance, LRA, we will sit together and review these things so that in two years from now, with the right changes in the incentive regime, our revenue collection capacity will be more than one billion. Let's do it. Thank you, uh, Minister. Uh, Senator, please permit me to go back in your end just to provide some historical context on how Liberia has become trapped in this whole incentive schemes where we negotiate you know, with each investor and then we give up so much. Um, when the Ministry of Planning and Economic Affairs, which was the subject of your first question, existed and the last minister turned out to be uh, Senator Corning. I worked with Senator, uh, Minister Corning at the time as his deputy minister for sectoral and development planning. And so we were in on most of the conversations you know, with all the investments that were coming in at the time. At the time, Liberia, we had just come from the Civil War. This was in President Salif's first term. The political economy at the time was for us to be able to make Liberia, one of the key considerations was for us to make Liberia to be attractive to foreign direct investors. We, and I think together we did a pretty good job. That's because the news about Liberia at the time were things to the effects of being cannibals, you know, being brutal, a brutal civil war. I mean, I don't want to remind people. But those, that was the situation at the time. And this is what led us to begin because one of the fears, every time we have private meeting, you know, it's been many years now, I think I can say this in public, the concerns on the government side was that if you hold these people too hard, maybe they will go to Syria, or maybe they will go to Gambia, maybe they will go to other places. Then we need to prove that Liberia is stable, Liberia is safe. Are those considerations still the same right today? I don't think so. I think we've made tremendous improvement. And I agree with the minister. This is about the time for us to review and see whether that's the regime that we want to go. My view on that is that we strengthen our tax regime, our revenue code, and make it so that you know there is a general rule that applies to everyone and anyone, so that investors don't have to come here and be scrambling to meet with people here and there, and be trying to find lobbyists and people who can introduce them. No, we have the general rule. And then like the minister said, in strenuous cases under that regime, then we can look at case by case. But in the meantime, I think part of the review that we need to conduct is to look at the performance of all those we've given these incentives to. Because many times when you read these agreements, you see lots of things that they're supposed to do. You know? But when you go into you know, the areas of operation and the things they're supposed to do, you know, then you don't see anything. You know, there's one particular case in point right now. One, you know, a, 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 a mining concession here currently has inundated their communities with jingles and announcements and everything on radio. They are about to build housing for people. They will build housing for communities. But this is something you should have done since 15 years ago. As a people, as a part of that review process, we really need to analyze these performances. You know, and, and yes, we do need the jobs that they will create. But believe you me, these are business people. They will not run away. What we need to do is when we set up these systems, let's allow the system to work. If we don't allow the system to work, then we honor money ourselves. And this is where we gotta have that discipline across all of government. We also have to ensure that we strengthen our judiciary, you know, because as chairman of Echo Bank, 
I mean, I came full center with the challenges that we have in the judiciary and how disappointing it is for me to convince my shareholders to put more money into Liberia. I had to make several trips to Togo, to Lomé, we were meeting all over the place. You know, because what? I mean, broad day cases, unarguable cases, we will lost it in the court, you know? So we need to be able to strengthen our judiciary, work with the judiciary, to make sure that investors can have assurances that once they invest their money, you know, they will be able to be protected under, under the law. Oh, you are saying that you are taking away my, my minute for you. You are answering too long. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Okay, my last question. Financing and and loan agreements. Minister, to your statement, you said if government assistance should, should be allowed, I will be a national means. The public also agree with that. In fact, they have been telling us that from the loans we take. Whether they are beneficial to the country. People sometimes complain that some of the panels bring the money and the credit card, all other bodies go on board. What's your thoughts on that? Well, thank you, Senator Chair. So, on this, the time has come in terms of just framing, and it's something that for all of us is just reflect. Now, in the space of six years, What can we show for for an increase in the public debt sum from 878 million to 2.2 billion? An increase of over 1.3 billion. What can we show? So that period has come. Uh, we should ask ourselves, can we see 1.3 billion in agriculture where we invested in critical agriculture infrastructure, equipment, training capacity? that we generate the facilities have shown. If we just do agricultural right, bring in factory year that adds value addition, for example, say rice we eat, how do we do it differently? Cassava we eat, how do we do it differently? Not just only for domestic consumption, but for export. So these are the critical areas in roads. We have 13,000 kilometers of road as the projected target in our country for the last 18 years. We have only been able to do 8.7% of that. So where has 1.3 billion been going? So these are just some critical questions. At this point in time, we'll say realign our loan quest to the National Development Plan. So we are agreeing going for that a rescue mission that emphasizes an arrest that focuses on agriculture, rural, education. That means my request to say, in this first year, let the national budget at least be seen nothing less than 15% towards public sector investment project. If we do it, these are the enables, rural, agriculture, ICT will be the enables that will take us to the quest for becoming a middle income country of a double digit group. So certainly as we work on what comes next regarding the, the new national development plan, we are saying the budget going fast should be aligned to the national development plan informing the way the budget is structured and the loans are expected to be taken. That's good. Thank you. We will now take Senator Mangue. <laughs>
when you went, the reason why I asked whether you were the lead for the Ever Nobel Management thing, I collected this information. The reason why I asked you because you work at the bank, so you have both knowledge in fiscal and, 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 and monetary management. I want to know, explain to us, what is the real story? It said that as of January 7, 17, it said that whatever on incumbent or incumbent, but did you also meet a laboratory company at the bank? Point of order. Yeah, the point of order. Can I ask this question? Point of order. What's the order? Yeah, yeah, the order. The order here is that the the preliminary.
the reserve room around the 80 million, 7.7 million is on one of the lines called payroll. And we inquire, but we want to pay for January. Why can we use it? The response was, this is part of the borrowing. So we hold it. So we hold it, and we say when you do that, that means in terms of actual revenue collection, you can't be putting debt into the actual revenue basket for the period of 2023. So if you take out even seven million, it further reduces the actual balance. So on this matter, we'll be calling for an audit of that process just to make sure that the restaurant is sold because it is even in violation of Section 36 of the Public Financial Management Act that any new debt must have come to you first for your approbation, which was not done. And the second thing, it also violated that financing of budget deficit must have been included in the budget for fiscal year 2024. Was that done? No one knows. And what was the basis to have gone to the central bank? Especially on an IMF program that says there should be no monetary financing. And the central bank shows to take 80 million. So granted, it is in 40 million. You gave me 40 million. And you took away 80 million. That's me. I'm making clarity. Yeah, but this is my question. We're not going through investigation. My question is this one. No, I'm saying I didn't tell the thing. My question what I want to know. What I want to know is what I'm not putting below was there. I'm not talking about the market. What are the bounds of the law? I want to know what I'm not putting below there. What are you saw like bread that are component? When you say full mingling, it means that there were two different figures. Fiscal year. Fiscal year. I don't want to know. Well, there were Liberian dollar components. Yes, that they took yes. The report they provided us has both Liberian dollar and, and what was that report? That both Liberian dollar and US dollar. What did that? What did it come up to? That what I want to know. So, for the record, general balance report received. The US dollar is fifteen million nine hundred seven thousand two thirty six eighty six cents as reported to us. The Liberian dollar component is one billion. Five million three hundred forty-eight thousand seven hundred nineteen converted, which we already we used into five million, and when you add those two, it's square. However, in this fifteen million, we suspect because from the response that the payroll line item. Okay, no, you answer. Okay, okay, okay. Before you question, I want to answer the question. Before you answer the question, you answer the question. 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 Answer the Yes, I'm going to tell you. That's your other one. My, 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 my question to you. Oh, no, 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 my target is you. My last question, my last question, my last question. My last question. Do you support the free tuition program? As a librarian, wanting quality education for all, a free tuition policy is something that, yes, we will want to do. However, the question is, how free is free? Let there be some issues that should be put around in terms of rent fencing. Who qualifies for it? On what basis people qualify? Are you aware well, of Article 6 or the Constitution? I'm only asking the question. My, I am at time because you, I don't want to answer all my time. Are you aware of Article 6 says that to provide math education to all citizens? Yes, so it should be done in a structured way. It must come my question is, what are structures structure or not? My question is, do you support the free education program? Yes or no? I will support the free education that is not in a structured manner through the national budget, thank through you. Ministry of Education, thank in you. a way that benefits people who deserve it. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you very much. <laughs> So now you have what it takes. So now you have what it takes. Senator DeLong in that order. Um, Senator yeah. Brown, yeah. Senator DeLong. Yeah. Oh. Yes,
if confirmed, I'm going to work as seriously with the team at LRA so that we can be able to, you know, direct, you know, some financing into that area so that based on the outcomes that we'll get from this pilot in Grand Basel, we can expand from one district to other districts as well as expand in other counties. So we already have, you know, um, this pilot framework going and we intend to build on that. The learning experiences we'll get and will continue. Of course, the service centers, you know, has been one of the key achievements I think that we made as a people, and it will be good for us to continue that. Unfortunately, we apparently didn't work out the financing mechanism properly for these service centers. So what was happening is that the resources, because our resources in Central are still local, I mean centralized in Monrovia. So, so this this new regime, what it's going to do is that it's going to give us the wherewithal to be able to, you know, work with the municipalities and local governments in collecting taxes and fees, and then it will all go in a in a consolidated account. But in the proportion that the legislature will agree, will be automatically transferred to the effective local government account, so that there can be transparency and accountability in the process. Thank you, sir. I had a question that uh, was in the, the, the chair. The former program asked briefly. It has to do with the the reform measures in post conflict like the required to merge the Ministry of Finance with the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, and as you regularly say and as you acknowledge, the, 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 the play and development department is, 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 has been wanting over the years. So you are taking over, Honorable Minister. Uh, my question is how do you intend to make the planning and development department functional? I was envisaged in the measure. What planning methodology are you going to adapt so that the figures you bring before us at the budget will reflect the developmental needs of our people. Thank you, uh, Mr. Brown. So on this, uh, as we've been doing some review across uh, the department, before we can achieve the process of request for separation mm -hmm. internally, First thing is that people must be given the independence to function. And that's, that's something we, we found that was lost. Uh, you see, have technicians within the Ministry of Finance who have the experience, and we believe we must work with them. In addition, with support from our international partners to strengthen the development plan in the of the nation. So, in the interim, as interim measure, once confirmed, we believe that's how we want to go in, identify the talent, identify the gaps, and then make sure where they need be for assistance. We work with our international partners who have expressed their willingness to even support us and move the development of the peace to a new level. Yes, uh, I've been serving before as the Deputy Minister of Planning for regional and sectoral planning. Uh, one of the things I would like to suggest to this August body in this <clears throat> discussion is for us to consider, like the minister said, elevating that function, maybe set up a planning commission. Because by merging it with the economic piece, like the two of you have indicated, you know, economic policy and planning will continue to be highlighted because that's the mainstay of the Ministry of Finance. But then spatial planning and other kinds of planning, you know, will be subjugated, and that's what we've seen. So to me, it will be good to have, you know, its own, you know, a standalone functionality of government that is responsible for those aspects of planning, which is really very, very important. If you take zooming, for instance, is one big problem that we have currently. You know, we have zooming. You know, there's a small uh, a unit in Ministry of Public Works, but that's not sufficient. See how Monrovia is expanding on all fronts towards the RIA and everywhere. There's absolutely no zooming. There's absolutely no city planning. 
So we do need a planning function area of government you know, that you know, can be robustly equipped to be able to address these developmental concerns. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have two more questions. Uh, if, if possible, if possible, if possible, let me, let me ask them, the two of them at the same time, and then you can. One has to do with Nokar, uh, the National Oil Corporation, company of Liberia, the Honorable Minister. You once said, as a uh, I mean, you were a finance minister, and by, by the ads. Uh, the reason why I'm asking you is during your administration, we saw the collapse of, of Nuka. Um, I remember when we were doing the budgeting here, Nuka could not even afford to pay the final salaries and set the severance benefits of his employees. We had to make a presentation and we had to swallow a bigger thing to place those into the national budget. Now we heard recently that President Walker has, has named an interim head of the car. Honorable Minister, can you briefly comment on what circumstances led to the collapse of the car? And two, what has informed the President's decision? What is the financial vibrancy of Nukau now for which the president wants to name people there? How is Nukau, what's the sovereignty of Nukau now? What are or what will be the sources of this funding? The last question. Up to the 2023 elections, Nasiri was enrolled into the IFF program. Our minister, I will have to go from you, uh, this new government. What is your position? What would be the position of the President Bogart's administration as regards the IMF program? Are we, are we going to continue to enroll or are you going to discontinue? Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Thank you so much. That's, that's it. Other well, questions? So, please debrief me your answer and then we'll take Senator DeLong, Senator Nupway, Senator Taylor and Chair in that order. Mr. Chair, Co-Chair, um, Honorable Senator, questions around why Nopal failed, what are the circumstances around which uh, brought it to that stage. We all know in the context of uh, anything in the context of the resource, I mean a revenue generating entity. I, for one, we believe almost all SOEs going forward, the lessons of the past, why it failed. We can go back to searching why it failed. And if we be proceed with audit and to make sure that issues that went wrong are identified, we learn the lessons. But in this current context, as we speak, NOCAL is a vibrant institution situated with all of us. And obviously, it must be an entity of focus to making sure uh, the appropriate uh, qualified, the appropriate structure, functions defined, and make it to be that entity that can be held liable in the future. And so I would say, for NUCAP and this operation, the decision by the president to appoint an officer in charge that means an officer in charge until the appropriate uh, nomination is done to fill those vacancies. And it does not only apply to the fact so there are also other institutions where there will be officer in charge until full nomination is done. But on the question for the IMF program, obviously an IMF program with this country is needed. As I indicated in my uh, uh, remarks, an IMF program should be complemented in terms of mapping out where we want resources to be spent, the IMF plays a catalytic role. What that means, a program with the IMF will be conditioned precedence for World Bank support, European Union support for our country. Mm -hmm. So certainly, we are made in some prior engagement just to make sure that we align, and there's gonna be a mission, uh, hopefully soon, 
And that mission will lay the groundwork for the new ECF program with the country. As we speak, that will be some of the reasons why our development partners will further engage us. Uh, in the context, we're looking for, for greater, greater, greater collaboration. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Madam Mr. Minister. That's it. We said at the beginning of this uh, hearing that the public will have the opportunity to shine on uh, in a question of constraint. So I would like to ask uh, Senator Dobo, who is in charge of that, to let us know whether there is anything coming out of the public. Uh, Honorable Chair, distinguished Senator, uh, we inform the Senate has to collect information from the public right here uh, from CEO of the public. Thank you very much. We'll not take Senator Delon. Senator, thank you. Um, I think 
that would be generated a lot more than was projected in the top budget that was projected, I think it was around 625 million. I think we can do more than that, you know. There are places within our revenue generation system, like I said, in my hoping to uh, that we can all work on, you know, closing. There are some places that are waste, there are some abuse in the system, you know, there are revenue leakages. Some of the alumni said I have limited time, but in 10 minutes, uh, I don't want you to be very brief with your response. Okay. Our current envelope of uh, for 600 million, is it realistic? Is it all the Can we grow our stuff? I think it's, it's about 625 million for uh, us off. Yeah, I think that is realistic. Mm -hmm. And then when we get in, we'll work as seamlessly to see whether we can grow that. Did you do with analysis or assessment to know what are this thing is realistic or there are other cases people come on or only can grow the revenue? Yes, I think that you know I spoke to the race folks at LRA. Okay. And but we need some investments because there's some constraints that they have. You know, so if we can invest in ensuring that we mitigate the risks that they have identified, you know. Let, you know for uh, example. Okay, the example is that some of our collection points are manually operated. Okay, because they are manual systems, it means the country relies on the individual discretion of that person who is recording the tallies and all of that. If we deploy technology there, that can remove the individual discretion and then that hopefully will carry things up. Also, the LRA piloted the deployment of fiscal devices. And I understand that, you know, a business, the business way it was targeted, I mean, the way it was piloted, it's a small Nigerian like, business. And the, the uh, 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 user taxes that were generated previously, so Mr. Nomini, I think what was a number of hundreds of dollars? Mr. Nomini, I think you asked a question. Oh, okay. uh, so, uh, I just want to make on that from the Okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, do you know about or have you heard about the company in at the Freeport? Do you know About the company at Freeport called CTN. Or have you done an assessment of what happened with at the point when it comes to doing business at the point? All the bureaucracies and bottlenecks and all of these things. Have you done any analysis of that to know uh, to, to, to tell me what do you intend to do? Well, CTM, some uh, CTM. And if you know about CTM, the CTM brings you when you to the Ministry of Law Conservation. Uh, Minister, I mean, sorry, Senator, I would like to ask your indulgence so that I will have to consult with any of my technicians and then I can get back to you. Uh, but let me assure you that under my leadership, you know, those are some of the things if you know, we identify such things as an inefficiency, then we'll, we'll be able to take the appropriate action. One of the things LRA has been proffering all along while here is a single window to make it easier for businesses to be able to pay their taxes as well as, you know, clear their cargo and all of that. So, so these are some of the places we'll be looking at. And if it is inefficient, and not doing what it's supposed to do to give our people the kind of relief that we need, we'll come back to you with recommendations for mitigation. Thank you. Uh, I will work, we will work with you okay. to review the task force okay. so that we see how we can be some of the for any on our people. Thank you. Uh, Minister of uh, uh, you were Minister of Finance before. Uh, you have our the budget problem is correct? Do you believe in Ackerman's program is budget? Question. I believe in program based budgeting and not itemized budget. What's the difference? The program based budgeting was being informed by performance as they associated with projects. For example, part of what we are thinking in terms of just bringing meat to the national budget is to begin the process of earmarking, say, Kush as an example. 
can we earmark in the national budget now to make sure that we get full traction to the reclamation that push is an, is an issue impacting on our people? So in the budget, include for a line item say for mental health. And we'll do for mental health a list and basis that clearly says government is interested in the people and addressing that matter for which it is not being earmarked. Also, EMR, for example, is a public health. So in those ways, they are addressing in a direct way program-related performance that you'll be holding people to account. Thank you. Sometimes when we ask questions, it sounds to me or naive, but sometimes we do have a test that they don't know. Yeah. OK. I'm checking it down. 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 In 129 million. 129 million. Part of the 129 million, the Minister of Finance gets grant, payment for grant, or grant, foreign liability for instance. 20 million. To invest debt. 74 million. This is called option six. 74 million. And you put previous years back. It's almost half a billion that we pay in domestic debt. How are you going to treat domestic debt payment and the transparency will be to be treated? Do you on our own commit to ensure that if you could get in ten dollars of domestic debt? That ten dollars must have been formed by the list. Do you commit or that there will be transparency for us to see that list? Question. Mr. Dillon, we do commit. And the first thing around that, when confirmed? If. <laughs> we'll begin the process first of doing the audit to know exactly to whom payment was made in line with the budget for those previous years. That's the first thing. And in the context of investment transparency, we'll read it in the management committee in its full function. And the other layer that's followed, debt management committee operation will be to reintroduce the economic management. Finally. Budget performance report. Your commitment. Fully commit to budget conformity, to budget performance report. As we did in the 18 months, we sat at the Minister of Finance from 2016 May. In December 2017, we are on record for making sure that those fiscal assets were done in time and we'll commit ourselves to all. What's the possibility of increasing civil service salary? The possibility. Now, no politics. At this point in time, to increase salary is something we cannot propose because the current wage bill of over 300 million. Something that rings bell for all of us is the public sector, the right place for that because it takes away almost 50 percent. So the first thing there is an audit that has been done of the personnel and payroll for 2018 to 2021 December that we have been informed of, and there are issues here. What's your view of public official at our level doing a austerity measure to cut down our money, including just if we are confirmed? Yeah. I fully. I fully agree, and that's why from the view of the executive, we have already advised the president that the fiscal rule must be reintroduced. And the fiscal rule, as an example, 
that says if I am traveling as minister, travel economy. The fiscal rule says for now put free a new hiring and the proper audit of the entire uh, uh, civil service. The fiscal rule said you should reduce the salary or only the power to Fiscal rule does not talk about salary reduction because well, it's not within the confines of the law. Thank you, Mr. Dominic. Mr. Chairman, I Thank you, thank you, Senator. The law we now take Senator Nokwe, my duty.
EU said it rightly, and as also the president said, that half, almost half of our revenue goes towards payroll. And you are concerned about infrastructure development. How do you intend to fix the budget? Or how do you intend to get additional resources to fund infrastructure development? Okay, so then I, I will come to the revenue authority. That will get my question for you. Um, Honorable nominee, go Expo. I'm quite aware, I, I've been here that the go IMO, the minerals that I have exported. How do you track as revenue authority? the quantity of mineral exported so that we get the appropriate taxes. Because I have heard that in many instances, taxes are compromised. Uh, the, uh, the right quantity is not being reported. How do you intend to address that? Petroleum product importation. We have seen in terms price, because there is a price structure for petroleum products. And at the end of it, the price is quoted. Take for instance $5.80, maybe for retail. I would uh, maybe emphasize retail. Or wholesale. That's a wholesale. We have to internal price where a particular importer is being able to sell five and to still remain a viable business entity, whereas others who are competitors cannot sell below the wholesale price. And they are struggling in business. And what has been reported is that some of these were favored by high option regimes and the taxes were compromised. How do you intend to address that? At some point in time, I cannot, I think uh, that was in 2021. Uh, when I took seat as Senator, I recall the revenue authority inaugurated the real estate pilot project in my view. And I'm quite sure you are aware that that has been going on for almost three years in my view. And the understanding was that every revenue generated was going to be shared with the county. To the best of my recollection, uh, no money has been appropriated for my lady uh, from this collection. How do you intend to address that going forward? Mr. Minister, I also like for you to speak to this. I'd like for you to please uh, check this also and see, because in the next budget, how many ways it means now, so I'm going to be checking. If you are sending a budget here, collected revenue from my DB on the real estate power project. So to understand that my DB was going to get uh, a portion of that money. And every design the project is going to be available for you to support. So I hope we can work collaboratively to ensure that my country interest is protected and our just benefit is given to our people on the development process. Uh, so far, uh, those are my concerns for now. So on the, concept, on the question regarding the concept, uh, we believe uh, greater, greater impact of development in the people as well as the country. Take for example, the re-establishment of the Metro Station through public works. We, we think that, as an example, that people could see tangible presence of government in counties through the regional center. So we do that through public works allocation, and uh, that's just an example. So greater impact through the budget, empowering the relevant agencies. Take, for example, a list that we've been using before. Do we need to revisit how this has been doing it? And then just sit around the table and then reorganize it? Uh, to reflect the, the representation across the 15 counties. And so these are just some talks. 
that will have to sit and go with you on as to how we re engage on those in terms of making sure our people see the impact. Uh, regarding um, accounts, how much of bank accounts at this point in time, I will not have the record before me to take full stop. But I know we've been in conversation from the single church, the accountants, making sure that situations where there are accounts of government held outside, especially from the center we want to make sure that we, we, we support the single church that come uh, our process and just make sure that that process of making everything in a way that is centralized and you can easily track with transparency, the better it is. Um, in the context of the road fund, that's an area in terms of how we have proportion for feed up as well as primary road in the current context. We're talking about an estimated 1.5 billion that is needed, as has been shared with us from our public work colleagues. Uh, so that amount, this aggregator, what proportion goes for feeder road, what proportion goes for primary road, we all can see and make sure that for me, the budget should be where these are reflected. And as we agree, certainly, in the context of right sizing, downsizing, at this point in time, my tip on this, First thing, we must take complete stock as to where we are in terms of the, the workforce, especially in the public sector. And we, 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 will, we will support the idea for GEC that has done a very good work for 2018 to 2021 in terms of payroll and personal audit completed for 2022 to December 2023. That will inform whether the 300 plus million wage bill is actually what it should be. That information will be relevant, and then we believe I don't support public sector to be the place for job growth. Private sector should now be. So our engagement, especially in terms of infrastructure project, as we engage our international partner, allow our national development plan. In agriculture, we say we want to do rice. Let's do rice for small farm water, as an example, and the benefit it brings. Doing road, that is an enabler that reduces the cost of transport across country. If we do roads well, it's going to be an area that further reduces constraint on prices and inflation. So yeah, yeah. Uh, these are all areas for me. Uh, in the context of just making sure collection across politic counties be reflected and make sure that due is, re is, is returned to the relevant county, we commit ourselves to doing that. Thank you, Senator Taylor. Order. Senator Taylor. Oh, okay. Let me just do mine quickly. Yeah, uh, thank you, Senator Newquay. There are first two questions to me point to leakages within our, within our collection mechanism. Whether those are under declaration of mineral values or you know, export numbers or under declaration of petroleum products. You know, or whatever shenanigans that goes on with those two. I can commit to you, Honorable Senator, and to this other body that will ensure that those things will stop. They will stop. If there were privileged individuals who, for no reason, were given special dispensations, we will review those dispensations and then we will go back to the authority whether it's the presidency or whoever, and ensure that those things, the people are not cheated. What I would like to appeal to you on is that as we begin the stringent enforcement of closing these revenue leakages, uh, some of you may get calls, but please, we ask you to work with us, you know, because you see, you know, in that grand term, Basel will require bad medicine. You know, but I think that we can all work together seriously. And my leadership at the LRB will ensure that many of these acts of impropriety on the part of whether they're LRB folks or whether there are other folks in the society, we will do our best to curb all of them so that our people can get the you know the highest dividends of our resources. Uh, regarding the revenue sharing piece, uh, the minister already answered that. So, in the interest of time, Senator, if it's okay with you, um, if that answer is adequate, then I think he already answered it. 
project on behalf of people. If, if, if we just leave it with the public, like for example, say they can implement it. But let's say, for example, you have $3 million allocated for very compounded, and public work has the technical know how. If, say, for example, Cape one Road with one school, and the relevant government agencies that are responsible will do that money in the budget for our county. So I would prefer that you include in the first budget that you submit to all that each county just for the five million dollars, three million dollars. And I think we need to answer. I think we need to be as much as we can. There is something to the budget going forward. The budget should be driven towards public sector investment project, and we should empower the institution that are to execute and hold them to execute. In a row, I will be playing. I will be there to collect the revenue. You know, but I all will allocate the revenue according to the PSM law. Yeah, you know, so, you know, and then you all work with finance ministry to put it into the budget and it says that, you know, it should be used for those purposes. So even for the, you know, the back to Senator Lucas, earlier question regarding the, the pilots that are going on the county for real estate collection. We will do the collection, but the policies that you will set up, you know, on how those monies to be allocated is what the Ministry of Finance will do. So, so Senator, it's really back to you. If you put in the law that this amount, because they were generated from this you know, local government area, that it should go to this local government, the Minister, as a committee, will be on the opposition. Okay, I agree with you. The reason why I ask because you said the share revenue that will come from the show account is Oh, in yeah, accordance with yeah, yeah, established, yeah, they are not No, no, not yet. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, I may have misspoken. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Speaker, um, Senator Chi, Senator Tao, I was tired of Senator Joseph, Senator Tine, and then Senator Snow, mm -hmm. also Senator Momo.
Because according to them, you do not mention anything about some of the key campaign promises, such as undoing the modernization, undoing the
for us to review all of that. You know, again, like I said, we'll come back to you on many fronts. You know, as we begin to, you know, develop the pack. I think the LRA has a zero draft now of the new domestic revenue mobilization strategy. And in there, there are some recommendations that, you know, will, will be able to address some of the concerns that you have. If we make our input processes, our clearing processes seamless, you know, and also we make our charges reasonable, you know, it is very likely that we can become competitive with me, our courts can become competitive with me, and hopefully with the construction of the roads and pavement of our major roads that interconnect our neighboring countries, we will be able to see a return on that. So those tariffs, the structure of the tariff, and, and what who set them in the legislature. So once we've done our analysis and we realize that there is a need for adjustments in them, and the processes will come back to you, you know, so that you know we can work together to make sure that we we'll bring that relief and also create the efficiency, hopefully, that will make us more attractive. Thank you. And the economy brokers have been complaining incessantly about the time it takes to clear a uh, on the port and how that uh, affects the revenue and revenue of the, of the, of the, uh, the customers. How that also impacts the, uh, the prices of goods and commodities. Um, so it takes a lot of time, a long time, and as a result, you pay excessive uh, fees. And those fees are added to the prices of goods that uh, uh, from the from the from the point are sold uh, on our on our market. Uh, how do you hope to get them back? Um, currently, the NRA has a contractual arrangement with Metex, and part of the um, vision for that, you know, is for us to increase the efficiency. So we will continue to work along those lines and hopefully be able to make improvements and, and increase efficiency with the clearing process. So wherever we think that bottlenecks, we will work to mitigate those bottlenecks. And if those bottlenecks require us coming back to you so we can make adjustments within the legal framework, then we will be able to make those proposals to you so that collectively we can all work at enhancing the efficiency. So my final question. What are your witnesses, uh, <laughs> the two of you? How, how will those witnesses impact your your performance at the Thank you. Yeah, maybe I should start. No. Oh, not me. Go ahead. Go ahead. The two of you. So go ahead. Well, actually, my major weakness, it is good that my wife is saying, yeah, okay. is that I work too hard and too long. And sometimes... Is that a weakness? Is that a weakness? Yes. 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 yes, because I'm taking away family time, which is really very important. That's true. So I deprive my wife and my family of time, because many times I'm working until very late. You know, I come home, I bring the work with me, you know, and I, you know, I have a workstation at home. I'm working until two, three in the morning at home. Then I wake up to go to work very early. You know, so that is something I will try to work and improve after we get set. Put that in content. Weakness on the job. Let put that in content. Oh, weakness on the job. Yeah. Um, my weakness on the job is my insistence on, you know, uh, perfection. That is one weakness I have. Yeah, that weakness there because I want the thing to be so good, you know. Yeah, you know, I keep fixing it, keep fixing it. Some other people want to say, but this thing is extraordinary, but it doesn't look extraordinary to me. So we we'll try to, you know, be able to, you know, uh, work on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, for the day, the first year of my first day. But going forward, the lesson has been a first for the year Thank you, Uematics and the Tarot, Agassiz and the Joseph.
Thank you, man. And the finish and the snow in our other. Uh, distinguished gentlemen, congratulations for the president. I will just run through quickly. Starting for Mr. Destiny. Mr. Dominic, are you committed to the revenue sharing uh, as contained in the local government act? Everything that relates to what the law requires us to do, we are committed in compliance with the law. Uh, in time pass, the social development fund pay by concession they have been a problem. And most often they are monetized. And when the countries are ready for their money, most times the delivered money goes into the consulted account. And you're getting out of supply. What would be your strategy to ensure that you know that is being given? Uh, thank you, Senator. As we did before, I think the problem in budget execution is discipline. And this all of the competing priorities, the demands that come, especially when those have been earmarked for that purpose. If we on record, we did our best during <coughs> our state to live up to that especially where they are earmarked, we want to make sure that that is held to come true, as we say. Mr. Minister, I want to respectfully disagree with you when you answer the question of the distinguished gentleman of public from Cape Man country regarding uh, maybe the way he put the revenue sharing as it relates to country development. You may recall and show you that in 2014, we proposed $1 million across each district of the Republic of Nigeria, making that 73 million. We were fortunate to have 38.5 million in the budget to start that. And then we took away in there of 2016, I'm sure you met the five million. And the reason for that, you know, you talk about HSAs. You don't give me the responsibility. Well, why around the country? I mean, around the country. We notice that though we sit for a and pass a budget, like no. said that they don't say, giving box figures. The Ministry of Education will pay 200 schools. We didn't see that. I'll bring up bigger tomorrow. The Ministry of Public Works is constructing roads. We didn't see that. I'll bring up bigger tomorrow. There were places that were so difficult to get to, but we're around the country. Yeah. And so, it, our suggestion or proposal was informed by that. And even though you may have a better view, but I think we need to go back to that. That if I may recall President Sally, former President Sally, in your last, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I'm not mistaken, the legislature indicated that if she had started up one year, or it would have started five years before, that would have been different in terms of development around. Country. So I want to encourage all of us because the budget is for the people. So to tell me that 45 million, as Taylor suggested, would be too full or too big for the people, I would just respect what they said. Because we are contemplating that and it says to the minister, yes, indeed, I want you to keep that in the back of your mind because that's the only way we believe with it. By the people. But anyway, it's a relation. Without access to most time, where even the pavement is not going to for me. The little roads, you, you know, would plow the road to, uh, to the other villages, all villages. So I want us to concentrate on the next one. Finally, I didn't want to ask the guy, but I got it. But I want to ask, uh, and I want to be specific as it relates to the answer. Times are tough. Most of our people are unemployed. And over the years, they have been very difficult to collect their asset taxes. It's because of the tough times. People are not working. They are not sure anybody in the room would be brave enough. So, know somebody who is unemployed, that's what they think who are just black out and throw their eyes in school. What is your strategy now that you will be taking over and when? 
We are giving jobs to all of foreigners. Home offices are not here. But when you go to pay, you have to communicate with them outside of the country. I think that's a major issue. Uh, as a senator of this country, uh, I will be looking forward to the possibility of us looking forward. Uh, uh, another company uh, of another LRA grouping that will be at Nettest office uh, is serving at the person that gave more at rent jobs than giving the others. Okay, you, you, you implemented the property reduction strategy. The, uh, plenty while serving there. What's your view now, based on the fact that you led the property reduction strategy program, and the uh, property reduction strategy program was successful in other countries, you led the process here. What is your view related to that? Well, my view is that, you know, we, President Sally, first term, did the poverty reduction strategy, and then the second term they went to the agenda for transformation. So, I mean, when we start to do comparisons, you know, it's really good to look at the historical. I think well, it was a it was successful, or the US had a little view. That's what I'm coming to, Senator. We need to look at ourselves in a historical context. You know, we need to look at where we were when President Salib took over first term as a country and where we have come from. And then by the time that poverty reduction strategy ended, there were several lofty ideals and goals that were set that were not met. So, but I think marked improvement was made. And some of those improvements, which especially the ones that are focused on peace and security, stability, are things that have been built upon. And today we have a pledging democracy that we now are like the example country in a sub-region, you know, where others are going to military rule, we are now second democratic turnover. So I think as a people, we have not been able to achieve all of the objectives and goals that were set in the different development strategies that has come since the PRS up to the, the, the uh, PAPD, but we're making steady progress. Should we stop at that? I say no. Let's accelerate it, let's be more vigorous. But mark improvements have been made over the years before we get up where we are. Uh, we, we need to go faster so I can give me use of my time. So long, because you and two, two, two more minutes, two more minutes. That are unclear. No, two more minutes. <laughs> okay, so um, both of you speaking about revenue growth and what have you, um, there are opportunities as you have said in your opening statement. And uh, one of those opportunities is by taking some uh, decision. We have the act that created the uh, LPRC. LPRC is so badly responsible to import gas and fuel into this country. No construction company has that authority, said LPRC. So you can raise up to 200 million additional resources for government if you can implement that act that created the LPRC. Can you work in that direction? Can you take that decision? It, is this for me? Yes. Okay. Well, let me just come in. For me, I say yes. We can do it. I think we can do even more. But we need to work in certainty. Because in the agreements with the processioners, which is granted by the Honorable Legislature, mm -hmm. that is where the incentive structures and the exceptions are made. My suggestion is that going forward, and I think this was something in response to an earlier question, we probably need to review all of this. Is this concession models the way we want to go? You know, or do we want to take another model? Considering that we graduated from the time where we were in desperately coming from war, let's look at our current context and our current situation and determine it. And, and if we decide that we want to go with a concessionary model, then what I would like to propose to this other body is that when the legislature is reviewing concession agreements, when the NIC is in discussion with concession years, that the, the tax authority should be at the table the, the fiscal policy authority should be at the table 
so that all of us can do the analysis. We can look at the opportunity and cost. Don't miss me, us. You are there. Yes. So that's a mission. You're supposed to be a safe to the table. I was implying that they're not there. Oh, okay. What I'm saying is oh, we need to dive deeper into the point I'm really making, let me be brief about it, is we need to dive deeper and make the analysis of the cost benefit of the things that we're weighing. Okay. You know, before we can go ahead and make those commitments in those agreements. Yeah. Mr. Please, in addition to that, why you answer what new you bring on the table?
Now, one bag of rice costs what? Three thousand, oh, yeah. what? Eighteen dollars. Yeah, Eighteen dollars. One bag of rice. Because that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm not interested in your spending for a road, a cleaning, a hospital. I want to feel. I want the people to feel government. You know, Senator, Senator Tyler, and the Taylor talked about money going to the districts, which I support fully. But I want people to feel government. And it's your job, Mr. Minister, but also feel government. So, what is the inflation rate today? Uh, Approximately. Let's say put around 10 percent. Is it possible that you can bring that inflation rate down? Yes, it, 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 in the rice issue, yes, we would need to take a complete review as to what are embedded in the price for rice, especially on in. We want to see that, and then, where necessary, we think there are areas for those adjustments that could be made that would impact on the lower price, and we'll take that decision. So that's one of the areas. Uh, working with the Ministry of Commerce folks is to clearly see quickly for that sort of intervention. I want to use rice. There are other commodities that are, that are essential for the market. People in the district are paying uh, $1,000 to go 100 miles on motorbikes because the gasoline price. Oh. Now, here where I am, the Commissioner General, is that going to affect if, if the inflation comes down, which means the Minister of Finance who has the policy says, I am going to reduce the cost, which means the input are now, yep, no, I, then I can question you and answer it. I'm not going to explain to you because I, I didn't want to get to Well, if the what we're doing is, if we bring down the cost of customs, which is where we might make the adjustments to be able to impact the price of rice, what will happen is, on the other side, the utilization side, we will have an increase in consumption. If we have an increase in consumption, the hope is that that will lead to an increase in generating in you know, the taxes. And so we might be able to mitigate it. But then we also must be able to take some of the measures that we mentioned earlier to ensure that. Oh, okay, okay. Because I. Huh? Tell me what you want to answer. Okay, let me no, I, I, I think what I want to see, I want to see, because you say thinking of the past. And yeah. of course, I have issues with the president uh, and what message. There are some key components that was missing. Thank you. So, what I really want to see is the policy and the revenue being able to impact the lives of the common people in the street. I don't want to go to the Togo shop have to pay $200 home for a price. What I want to hear from you is how can those people pay $100 a home for uh, one, yeah. one plate of Kobo rice? Kobo not get rest. Kobo not poo. Kobo not poo. The other aspect uh, is that Cost of cleaning, we drive it down. It's not only the, the program budget, but we drive that cost of cleaning down. I'm very concerned about that. I'm very concerned about how you manage that economy. 
Well, yeah, of course, we want people to grow it. I know that you can grow it in the mining sector, grow it in the agricultural sector. Banking sector is, is, is you, you know, I don't have to tell you that. It's a mess. But you are responsible for that. And how can you give me that guarantee that my own money is going to be that tomorrow we're going to you? But you see, you No, I haven't got it. Tomorrow. 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 Tomorrow, I put my hands up and say yes to the Minister of Finance, yes to the Commissioner General, that when the committee called you, do you want to give us a explanation of what we are, what you want us to do, and how your program will impact the lives of the individuals? Thank you. 